The R744 is a late 50s, early 60s design surveillance receiver. It was uh, used to monitor between 20 to 100 megahertz. It has two antenna inputs, one for a WIP antenna, one for a DF antenna. It was used as part of a DF setup also for direction finding. The receiver receives AM, FM, CW. Uh, so it's pretty much all mode, and it does all this in one band that covers 20 to 100 megahertz with a sliding tuning indicator. We'll go ahead and open it up. I've already removed the four screws on the end, so just loosen the ones in the center here. Now the receiver pops out of the case. We'll turn it around so you can look at the design and we can see this uses eight micro circuits. Each micro circuit is a little sealed tube that has maybe a vacuum tube or a diode in it and some components and they were designed so instead of actually working on a radio, you could change out whole sub assemblies. In addition to this, there's some tubes, they're peanut tubes which are located up on the top of the chassis and they're the RF amplifiers, mixer, and oscillator. This is one of the tubes right here. This is a uh, 6612. And they're a very small tube, uh, maybe a half inch wide and a quarter inch thick. No base, just pins and wires. On the back half of the receiver, we have spaces for batteries, for the battery compartments, and also a DC to DC power converter. And this is a very early solid state switching supply power converter. This one had some issues with it. Uh, a couple of the uh, capacitors that were in it had kind of dried out and just gone open over age. I mean, they are about 70 years old, so... I imagine it was time for him to fail. This set also came along with a accessory kit. Uh, the accessory box there. and You can see that has some micro circuits in it and spare switching transistor and some of the tubes and a little jumper cable uh, for running the radio outside of the case. Now this particular radio, in addition to having a bad uh, DC to DC inverter, also had cracked switches for the uh, power switch and the antenna selector switch. So I had to remove the IF and audio deck. And fortunately, that's pretty easy on this. There's four screws and a couple connectors and a plug. So after that's done, and the cables were undone, the entire IF audio assembly pops out and gives you access to the backs of the switches. So they got a drop of uh, super glue and then a, a wire tie that goes around them, which uh, further reinforces them for the future. So that way they should be stable. Even if the glue isn't enough, the, the plastic wire tie will do it. So let's actually see the receiver in operation. We're at 80 megahertz. So that was one microvolt at 80 megahertz. We'll tune it down to 51.0. Seems that that's a frequency we use a lot at a lot of the get-togethers and events. Go ahead and set the generator down to 51. And now it's on 51.0. And there's the signal. And this is all running uh, one microvolt. So we just switched it over into the uh, FM mode now. And what I forgot was I had my signal generator set so it was both in AM and FM simultaneously. You could do that with the old HP test generators. But now we're actually in the FM mode. So 
What I'm going to do now is uh, we'll switch it over to AM mode and we're going to tune down the band. And we'll go to uh, 27.185 in AM. The band spread and calibration is a lot better on the low end than it is on the high end. So I think we're there. We'll go up to the signal generator. And let's crank that down to 27,185. Check and make sure we've done our frequency. And that's still at one microvolt because that hasn't changed. You get kind of an idea of how these old receivers work. I mean, they're not the most sensitive or selective, but they do work and they cover a large range. And for when they were built, they're a pretty good piece of technology. Once again, thanks for watching.